Welcome to Papa's Workshop. In the first video on my maintenance for the CNC for newbie new car machine, we covered a lot of different areas. But there are still some things that we need to be able to take care of primarily on the Z axis. And I want to show you how to do that today. So come on, let's get started. In part one, on the y-axis, I showed how to be able to grease the anti-backlash nuts, and I want to be able to show you how to do that on the x-axis. It's a little bit tricky, but the grease gun will still fit right into this area with that long neck needle valve, and you can grease right around this area, and that's all that's necessary. Because it's very hard to see on the x-axis, I wanted to be able to show you again on the y-axis exactly where that needle needs to go to have the grease go into this. And it's right here at this point that you need to be able to put the grease into it. Now on the x-axis, you can get to this point on that left-hand side, and that grease gun will just slip right into that point between that brass fitting and the aluminum housing. And then once you get the uh, joint greased, it's going to be very difficult to get in there to wipe it off. So you want to stay as neat as possible. I know this is real hard to see in the camera because this anti-backlash nut is hidden behind the um, Z-axis. But with this long needle nose uh, adapter, it works real well for getting in there. And all you need to be able to do is get right down get right into there and I'll put a little grease in here I'll move over a little bit to there there we go and that's all that's necessary it's not as hard as it looks <laughs> getting the camera where you can see it is the hardest part Doing it without the camera on is actually quite easy. If you look at the Z-axis on the new car, they have the linear bearings also, but there's no access port to be able to grease those. So the best thing to do is to be able to put 3-in-1 oil on these slides. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to use the 3-in-1 oil, and this works real well to be able to put the oil on these rails and also on this lead screw here. You do not need to actually get down to the anti-backlash nut to be able to grease that. Just put the oil on the um, lead screw and that works well. And I'm just using a clean cloth to be able to put the oil on here. Now I am going to soak this little piece of cloth quite a bit with the oil so there's enough on that rag that it does transfer over to that lead screw as well as those rails. The other thing that I'm going to do also is I am going to turn the machine on and move the Z-axis up and down to be able to gain the greatest access possible to the rail that I can't reach at this point. Now I have the rag soaked with the oil and I'm going to put it right in that area and I'm going to get it on the sides and while I'm here I'm also going to do the lead screw itself. Now remember the backlash nut, the anti-backlash nut is down in here but it does not need to be uh, greased. And that's really all that is necessary. Now I'm going to move the uh, Z-axis off camera. I'm going to move it up and down to be able to access the portion that I can't get to. Now on the X-Car, I've upgraded to the CNC for newbie uh, Z-axis. And to do the maintenance on this, you do the exact same thing. Because these linear bearings do not have the grease ports where you can just take that screw out, all I need to be able to do, again, is just add the oil, soak the rag, 
and then be able to wipe that oil onto the lead screw and onto these linear rails and that takes care of it. Now again, off camera, I'm going to raise this up and work on this area that I can't reach. And the last thing I want to check is to make sure that this is still plumb. And if I put that right up there, I can see that that is completely plumb and perpendicular to the table. And then I can rotate this and check this axis and see that again, it's exactly uh, plumb and perpendicular to the machine and to the wasteboard itself. But what happens if it was not? What happens if this was off and it wasn't plumb? Well, the only way to be able to do it is to be able to loosen the nuts and be able to put the shims in it. If it needed to tilt forward, you'd need to have the shims up top. If you needed it to tilt back to get this plumb, you would need to put some shims at the bottom. Now on the new car, this C-axis is attached by two screws right here. The screws on the bottom are right down here. And if you need to make the adjustments again, you can put shims on these little screws here, or the ones on top, to be able to move this spindle forward or backwards to be able to get it plumb. But just a very small amount is all that should be necessary, if any at all. Mine was dead on to begin with, and I did not need to make any adjustment. On the X-Carve, when I put on the upgrade, there's only four screws. There's two here, and there's two at the bottom. So the same thing. If I needed to tilt this forward, I'd be able to put some shims right in here, or actually right behind the nut itself, to be able to extend that forward. And if I needed to extend it back, then I would just simply put the shims at the bottom. Now there's very little room to be able to move left and right, but if you should need to do that, it should be a very small amount of movement and then just retighten the screws. You can see that there's absolutely no gap there at all, and that is perfectly plumb. But what happens if there was a little bit of gap? By loosening those four screws, you can shift this whole unit left to right just a tiny little bit to be able to correct that. If I look at this direction, you again can see that it's sitting perfectly against the middle of the Z-axis and along the wasteboard. There is no gap at all, and that's what you're looking for. If there was any gap such as that, I mean, that's exaggerating, but if there was a gap, then all I would need to do is loosen those four screws tilt it out, put some shims in there until it did sit just like this, perfectly uh, aligned. And then of course, tighten it back and readjust and check it. And the last thing that I like to do is just put some oil on that rag and wipe it all along the entire rail, just so it has a thin cut of oil on it. And I'll do the same thing on all of them. And I'll move that to get to the rear. Because I think it's important to have a good coat of oil on all of this. Even though I don't have the machine come all the way over to the very end, I think it's a good idea to have oil along the whole entire surface. Now this is the final step that I do throughout the entire machine and that will complete the entire maintenance of the CNC for newbie, new car, machine, and this helps to keep this machining running just like new. Now, if any of you have questions on anything that I've covered today, or you don't feel that I covered it enough, and you have questions, by all means, leave me a, a comment below, and I will absolutely do my best to answer each and every question in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, 
by all means, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like uh, button, and share it with as many people as you possibly can. I also want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, and I want to thank everybody out there for watching this video today. And until next time, again, thank you. Bye-bye.